Okay, so today we're going to go over the export uh, feature in Festo Automation Suite for uh, the CPX API system um, in a Rockwell environment. So what this will allow you to do is to uh, configure the CPX API system like you plan to have it on your real machine and um, export it into an L5X and it will automatically uh, configure the byte size according to how you configure it in Automation Suite. So we'll walk through all that. So first I have um, Festo Automation Suite open. Uh, first thing we need to do is make sure that we are up to date on everything. So if I uh, go check the version of my Festo Automation Suite, you can do a search for update here. And once you know you're up to date there, let's go to, let's go back to install device plugins into repositories, plugins, and we need this CPX AP plugin. If you don't see it, do a search for update. It should pop up um, as installable and you can install it here. Okay, then let's make a new project. So let's do a new project here. Uh, this will be kind of the topology area. And on the right side, you can see the device repository. So if I click on AP device, um, <clears throat> we have remote IOs, we have valve terminals, and we have the bus interfaces. Uh, we only have the EP one in here right now because this tool is only for that at the moment. So um, I am mimicking a real system, which actually, let me just show you um, what it actually looks like. So. Uh, if I transition my screen over, um, you can see that's the actual physical system. So uh, I have um, an Ethernet IP node on the front and then a few I.O. modules and a manifold at the end. All right. So let's go ahead and in here um, add the Ethernet IP bus node first. And then uh, next in my line, I am going to have an 8DI module. Drop that in. Then I'm going to have a 4DI, 4DO module. Then I will have a 4 analog in module, a 4 IO link module. And lastly, I have a valve terminal, which is actually a VAEM uh, 12 interface on the front end. You, the, this part number will be on the um, AP interface block, actually. So you should, um, if, if you don't have it yet, you can type in the configuration code of your manifold, and in the spare parts portal, it will show you a breakdown. And this one of these three parts will be in here. These two are for VTUG, and this one is for MPAL. So mine is this one here. I'll drop that in. And now um, we need to connect all these, how they're actually going to be connected on the real machine. Um, so on the AP node or on the Ethernet IP front end here, um, there's two ports going out. One is XF20 and one is XF21. These are two different lines that get addressed differently. So uh, the system will address everything on XF20 first, and then it will address everything on XF21 afterwards. So it's important that you actually map these out correctly in here so that the data is mapped correctly. So we'll take XF20 and I'm gonna to go to XF10 in on my DI module and then I'm just going to daisy chain these together um, how I actually, and this is how I actually have them connected in the real world uh, next to me here. Okay, so now, um, this plugin is not to actually connect to this system. Once you have your real system, um, the web server is how we currently do that, uh, do that part. There will be a update to this plugin so that you can connect to it uh, and see process data and everything. But for now, um, we what well, the next step would be to configure any parameters on these devices, um, how we want them before we do the export because uh, with Ethernet IP, there's configuration data in the export uh, that lives on your Rockwell PLC. 
And every time the API system connects to that Rockwell PLC, that configuration data is being pushed down to the API system. So we got to make sure we get, get this configuration set correctly to begin with. So let's just look at the um, Ethernet IP node here first. And you'll see when I double click on it, it opens a tab at the top for it. I can see the part number for it. Um, and any parameters that I, are settable in here, um, there's not a whole lot here other than you know enabling the web server and stuff, which we want to leave. Um, you may want to consider turning that off if you're um, sending this machine to customers or whatever. Um, but we're going to leave it on in this case. Um, I'll close that one. It takes us back to the topology editor. Um, if we look at, let's just look at what's on an analog in module. I don't have any devices connected to this, um, but you can see this is a four channel analog in um, and it can do um, RTDs and everything too. So you can select your signal range, you can select your temperature unit, threshold values for um, errors, everything like that. I do have a device connected on the first port, port zero of my four IOL module. So I do need to go in here and make sure that that port is turned on. Um, so you will see that my port mode is uh, deactivated right now. Um, I'm going to use the IO link auto start, which will automatically start any device connected to it. The other ones I'm going to leave as deactivated. Um, if they're activated and there's nothing on it, it will uh, throw an error on the API system. It will still operate. The API system will still operate fine. You'll just have an uh, error code uh, in your diagnostic table. The other thing to note here is the variant. This variant down here is the um, number of bytes that are active per port. So eight means we have eight bytes of input and eight bytes of output available per port over IO link. And um, it's important that you have enough data available per port uh, for whatever device you're going to connect to it. Uh, it turns out I have an SPAN, which is a pressure sensor. Um, I, it only is uh, two bytes of data in on it, zero out. Um, I am going to recommend that you always stay above four in and four out per port. And this has to do with the synchronous copy instruction in Rockwell and how this data exports. Um, so I will actually I'll drop this down to four. And so now I have four bytes of input, four bytes of output per port. All right, um, I'll close this. And now we're ready to export this, right? I have everything configured how I want it, all my parameters set. Um, I'm going to now export this. So I'm gonna go up to this hamburger button up here. I'm gonna go to export and I'm gonna have a Rockwell L5X export. I'm gonna select my ethernet IP node, and I'm gonna hit this export button, and I'm gonna actually export it to um, just a folder here that I will call uh, my CPX API. It's exporting as an L5X project, so this is an entire Rockwell project. So I'll save that, and it's doing the export, and it says export complete. All right, at this point, we are done with the export out of Festo Automation Suite. If you want, you can save this project so that if you ever um, want to open it up again, you're not starting from scratch. Um, so to do that, just go in here and do a save as, save it to your local hard drive, right? All right, so I will move this off the screen. Now you'll, you're seeing the desktop where my uh, Rockwell software is. Um, you can see that, uh, I, well, I exported it to this folder. It's not showing right now because I just had to do a refresh on it here. Uh, so now that L5X shows up. I have linked it to, uh, as a Rockwell file, the L5X extension. So I can just double click on this and it's gonna open um, Studio 5000 as a um, project.
Okay. Okay. So now it's opened up. <clears throat> um, I'm so it, it has me save this as an ACD, which is a the project extension for Rockwell. I'm going to convert this to version 33, which is uh, the version I have on my PLC that I'm going to connect to. So I'm going to import this project, and I already did this once, so I'm replacing a file that already exists. <clears throat> and now we have the project open. Um, I'm going to actually well, first, let's look at what's in the project, right? So it just gives you some default controller in here. Um, you would obviously, if you're starting from scratch, change the controller you really have, or just take what you need out of this project and bring it into your real project. Uh, the important thing that it, it, it has automatically set up for you is this Ethernet module here. So this is a generic Ethernet module, but it already has all the bytes and assembly instances set up. So if I double click on it, um, it just gave it a generic name, and it has the IP address that is a default, so I need to change this to the real IP address of my uh, system, if you know, or whatever you're planning it to be. So I'll change this to 1.30, and then you can see that the assembly instances, um, the input and output, are set up for 32-bit. It already puts the uh, array size in here. It also has the configuration data in here. So I told you that this was, um, this ho holds all the parameters that we set up in Festo Automation Suite so that when we connect the CPX API system to it, um, it automatically pushes it down. Um, it also has status data. So this input status data is um, 21 DINs long. This is going to store the um, global CPX API data, it also has status data per module on there. All right, so I'll hit OK on this. And let's just take a look at what is also included. So there is a main routine here that actually has three rungs of code. These are all just uh, synchronous copy instructions. So it's taking the raw input data from this Ethernet module and copying it into these UDTs. Uh, you can see that it's called data type DT CPX API. And if we look under the user defined data types here, you'll see that there's already some created, right? So let's just take a look at what are in those. So instead of working with raw data, it is actually um, mapping it into a UDT with those CPS uh, instructions. So you can see that it's gonna give you which physical module it is, what type it is in the description. So we know this is my ADI module. And then I have channels zero through seven here, which are the uh, eight inputs on that ADI module. I have my module three, which has four inputs because it's a 4DI, 4DO module. I have my analog input module, which is gonna be four integers. And I have my four IOL module, which is going to be um, four synths that are four, or, um, sorry, four arrays of synths, four bytes long. Um, and then I have uh, this PQI data, which um, we don't use. So if I look at the outputs, similarly, it's going to break it down per module, right? So my 4DI, 4DO module, I have four digital outputs. My IO link is four output bytes of data per port. And then I have my um, VAEM, which is my VTUG manifold, and you can see there's 24 coils associated with it, right? So I can tr uh, trigger the coils in here. If you don't want to use the user-defined data types, you don't have to. You can work with the um, controller tags directly. Uh, it's just, you know, there if you want it. In the status UDT, just so you can see, there is a global status. Uh, so this will signal, you know, if there's any diagnosis codes on any of the modules or in the system as a whole. And then you can actually see the diagnosis codes per module if you need to. Right? And this is all mapped into a tag called 
uh, status here from the status tag controller tags. Um, so I'm going to now connect this to my real system. So I need to change the controller type here to what I actually have, which is a L18ER. I do have software version 33. So I'm going to convert this project, uh, this controller, to an L18. And then I'm going to change my expansion modules. I don't have any on here. So I'll just set that to zero, apply it, and OK. And now, um, <clears throat> let's see. I'm going to try to connect to my real system. Um, so I'll show you my real system in the corner here. Uh, let's go to um, download to my PLC and going to do the download here. We'll download. Done downloading. Let's switch to run mode. And you'll see that, uh, if I close this down here, it's trying to connect, but I'm actually not physically connected right now. So I need to go up here and plug in my Ethernet IP cord to my Ethernet IP node on the CPX API system, which I have now connected. I can see over in my Rockwell uh, program here that the module is running. And now we can, uh, well, let's see here. We can uh, see if there's any data. So um, I don't know if you can see on the screen, but I have a, on my 4DI, 4DO module, I have an output wire to an input. So let's just see if uh, we can trigger that. So go to monitor on the outputs here. And it is on my... 40i, 40o module, and it's actually output zero, so it should be. Uh, I gotta go to edit tags, outputs, monitor tags, sorry, and outputs here. I put a one in, and I can see it has fired. Is it actually on one? Um, Oh yeah, it is, okay. So I can see it toggling. Um, we should be able to see on my inputs also that, uh, yeah, so on that 4DI, 4DO module, we see the input turning on when I turn this output on and off, right? Um, let's try it with the uh, manifold, the V2G manifold. So here's coil one. So if I toggle that, I can hear it, you probably, I don't know if you can see it there, but All right, you can see the coils firing on the valve manifold. The one that didn't fire there was because um, that's a single coil valve, but a two coil base. So that all seems to be working. Um, if you do want to just use the generic Ethernet module in your program, you can right click and copy paste it into your own program. Um, if you are planning on using these CPS functions, um, I would recommend uh, naming this routine whatever you want and doing an export routine. That way, not only do you have the CPS instructions, um, you also have the um, user defined data types will come with it. All right, uh, that's all I have. Thanks for watching.